Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're gonna be talking about a pistol that uh, has a special place in my heart. Uh, we are talking about the 1911. I have been a big fan of the 1911 ever since I can remember. And I have this guy right here to thank for that. Uh, naturally, he brought me up uh, believing that the 1911 was kind of a uh, platform or a pistol that was far exceeding its development back in 1911. And we kind of see that today, that it's still kind of evolving, you know, a hundred and what, 12 years later, it's still around and still kicking. So uh, with that being said, let's dive into it. This time we're going to be talking about the Gerson MC-1911C. This is going to be a commander's size 1911 chambered in nine millimeter. And this is actually something I'm very interested in taking a look at. Now, I'm going to do a rough overview of everything going on with this pistol to talk about all of the feature sets and then talk about my experience as well because uh, I had high hopes for this. Unfortunately, it's coming up a little short and we're gonna be talking about all of the different issues that I've had with this pistol. Now, we can go ahead and start in the comments right now with all of your jokes and all of the uh, very uh, trite comments of two world wars and Jamal Manic and all that stuff. Yeah, we get it, right? But I honestly feel that 1911s, especially over the last five years, have come a long way, especially with the introduction of the 2011s and starting to see kind of a higher end um, pistol that is performing very, very well. Does that mean that all of them are perfect? No, uh, I know that a lot of people like Rock Island 1911s, but those are still kind of finicky from time to time. So we'll go ahead and get that out of the way right off the bat. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about real quick is uh, fitandfire.com. That is my website to support everything that's going on with this channel if you're uh, new to uh, the channel, which we've seen a lot of growth over the last couple of weeks. I really do appreciate you guys swinging by. And if you haven't joined the Fit and Fire newsletter, I encourage you guys to go over, check out the homepage, sign up for the newsletter. It's going to be a great way to not only support the channel with affiliate links, but also check out all the different uh, videos that have come out recently. Some training opportunities across the country for any particular month that I'm putting that newsletter out and uh, a way for you guys to uh, get in on a giveaway. So check that out if you guys are interested. I'd appreciate it. Okay, so let's get back into the Gerson MC-1911. Uh, let me tell you, this pistol really has a lot of people's heads turning because uh, not only does this pistol have a lot of great feature sets going for it in the fact that uh, they have this particular pistol offered in 9mm and 45 ACP, but it's also hovering right around that $500 mark, making this very desirable for those individuals who are looking for a 1911, but don't necessarily have the money to spend, you know, the STI money or the Nighthawk money or anything like that. So uh, seeing something like this out on the market is extremely intriguing and I was hoping that this would be kind of a pistol that I could use for competition, especially for the tactical games coming up here in August for the Kansas meet. But we're gonna talk about that here in just a second. Let's talk about all of the different feature sets that's got going on with this real quick, down and dirty. First and foremost, you're going to have Novex style three dot sights on this. And uh, you know you can take those or leave them. Not my personal preference, but they're serviceable, they work. And you also got front and rear slide serrations, a really nice pick section here on the dust cover. Ambi safety, so you have the safety lever on both sides there, a skeletonized trigger and hammer, a really nice beaver tail here, memory bump on the safety grip, you've got texturing on the front and rear of the grip as well, G10 style grips, which a lot of people change these out and I don't think that you need to because this grip really feels good in the hand. It's gonna come with one Metgar nine round magazine and uh, the trigger on this is going to be somewhere around that five and a half to six pound mark, which is going to be heavier than what a lot of people would expect from a 1911. But let me tell you, even still with that heavier trigger pull, it is really nice crisp 
wall and a glass-like break, and then your reset, one millimeter, extremely short, and then there's your break again. So a lot of great features coming with this pistol for about $500. I purchased this for $480 on an online auction and um, thought that I was going to be very well pleased when I pulled this out of the box, looked at it, and man, the, the fit and finish really looks good on this. That peanut butter look with the tan Cerakote is really nice as well. Really good looking pistol. Unfortunately, that's kind of where it stops for me. <laughs> for the first 500 rounds I've put through this, I have had very few magazines go through this without some type of hiccup. Some small, some bigger, and we're gonna get into that. Of those 500 rounds, 400 rounds of that is going to be 124 grain from various manufacturers to include Arms Corps, Blazer Brass, Winchester White Box, and Federal. So four different makes, and I had issues with all four of them. I also tried 100 rounds of Federal 115 grain, and uh, it didn't really like the 115 grain very much. And that's actually kind of surprising because if you look at uh, Honest Outlaw's first impressions video of his MC1911C, he had no issues using new manufactured ammunition. So um, we'll take that into consideration. The next thing that I want to talk about real quick before we get into what happened with the 500 rounds is um, the way I look at pistols, the way I review them is as soon as I get them from my FFL, I take it to the range, I don't clean it. I pull it directly out of the box, I load up a magazine, and I start firing. And that's kind of how I feel a firearm should work. If it's not good enough to pull straight out of the box and start shooting, then that is a concern that the manufacturer might need to look into um, changing some things uh, to make sure that they are ready to go right out of the box because there's a lot of people that may not necessarily know how to completely disassemble a pistol, clean it properly, and then reassemble it and get it to the range. They're just eager to get it to the range and get going. So um, food for thought, you can agree or disagree with me on that, but that's kind of how I see it. Okay, so the first 100 rounds was 124 grain uh, blazer brass that I put through it, and the first issues that I had was when the slide would lock back, I would have one round just kind of hanging out here in the ejection port on top of the magazine. So if I was to drop the magazine, the round would fall free. Had that several times and uh, was surprised to see that. I thought maybe uh, there was an issue with the magazine. Talked to a couple of different people. They're like, hey, you know what? Get some Wilson Combat magazines that should fix the problem. The unfortunate thing is I took that advice and found that the Wilson Combat magazines that I did purchase, there were 10 round magazines, they did not fit. On a closed slide, uh, it would not lock into place. You lock the slide to the rear, it would lock into place, but then when you let the slide go forward, the slide would not fully go into battery. So unfortunately I could not use those magazines with this pistol. Uh, luckily enough for me, I was able to get uh, them returned to Gun Mag Warehouse. So a huge thank you to them for great customer service and uh, hearing me out on my issues and allowing me to return them for a refund. So that was pretty cool. What I did do though was I purchased another nine round magazine just like this one. And then I purchased two more 10 round magazines as well to see if there was going to be any uh, further issues. Spoiler alert, there was. So, <laughs> uh, so the first 200 rounds uh, had some issues and um, took it home and kind of looked it over. Didn't really see anything glaring that was an issue and took it out to my next range session, put another 100 rounds of 124 grain through it, and that's where I started to see the jamming issues. These jams were interesting in the fact that they were parallel, um, mostly parallel to the uh, slide and barrel, which tells me that there may be an issue with the extractor, that the extractor is not grabbing onto the rim of the uh, round, 
So as it's firing, it's actually using the blowback of the um, round to kind of eject itself instead of the extractor pulling it out. Um, and that next round trying to pop it out. You'll notice in some of these videos that you're gonna see very, very weak ejection, especially on the last round. And that's kind of what is also tipping me off to that issue as well. I did have several rounds that were vertical and straight up stove pipes, but the majority of them I saw were parallel when they jammed up. So I am expecting it to be a, an um, extractor issue. With that being said, after my second range session, I brought it home. I thoroughly cleaned the uh, pistol um, to include removing the extractor and the firing pin and cleaning out the extractor and firing pin channels. And those were extremely dirty. I also did a really thorough cleaning of the uh, extractor as well. And then I tested the tuning of the extractor to make sure that uh, we were good to go. The way that you do that is you disassemble the firearm uh, with the slide. You take a spent shell casing, insert it into the slide so that the extractor has engaged that round, and then you uh, turn around and uh, kind of beat it on the uh, counter just a little bit, not, not very hard at all, to see if that round will fall out. If it doesn't, then that means that in theory, the extractor is tuned properly and that uh, you shouldn't have any concerns. But in my case, it may be over tuned so that there's too much tension uh, on that extractor. So that is uh, another concern. Uh, the next 200 rounds getting me up to the 500 round mark, uh, all 124 grain arms core and uh, that didn't end up any better after I did a thorough deep clean, um, cleaned out the firing pin and extractor channels, cleaned up the extractor, uh, oiled it very well, took it to the range and still had the same issues. I was able to get through one magazine and I was really excited about that, but um, as we started to go on, uh, through, I started having the same issues over and over again. So, uh, pretty let down by this. I've seen a lot of positive reviews on this pistol and was hoping that I would continue to have the same experience, but unfortunately I did not. And, uh, I know I'm going to get the comments, uh, that says, well, you get what you pay for. And in this particular case, I kind of agree with them. Does that mean that you're going to get one that's just as bad? Maybe not. Honest Outlaw seems to have uh, good success with his, so uh, take that for what it's worth. I am sending this back to EAA, and I'm going to have them take a look at it to find out what the issues are, see if they can fix it, get it back to the channel, run another 500 rounds so we get 1,000 total rounds through this, and then give you guys a follow-up report on this. Unfortunately, right now, the way I see it, is if anyone were to ask me my thoughts on that, I would tell them exactly what I just told you guys. Uh, looks great, uh, has a lot of great features for the price. Unfortunately, I have not had a lot of good success with it. But we'll see what happens once I send it in and uh, allow them to uh, fix whatever issues that I've had with it, and we'll go from there. What do you guys think? Sound off in the comment section down below. Do you think that the 1911 is an antiquated design and a pistol that should just kind of go along the wayside? Or do you think that there is still a um, market for it? Do you think that the uh, STI 2011s or the 2011 type of pistol is a relevant model? Let me know. Sound off in the comment section down below. If you've had any experience with the Gerson uh, pistols, let me know about that as well, especially the MC 1911s. Tell me everything that you guys think about these pistols. I would love to hear about it. We'll have a discussion about it down in the comments below. With that being said, I really do appreciate you guys swinging by and checking things out again. If you're interested, jumping in on the Fit and Fire newsletter, swing on by fitandfire.com and sign up for that on the homepage. I would appreciate it. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.